and he will be breaking out the root riders and try to set the pace as fast as possible right out of the gate here and hopefully doesn't make any mistakes yeah with the siege barracks straight up to the top side king queen off to the right and root riders on into the eagle artillery the very nice thing about coming to the eagle side is taking that down nice and early so you don't have the eagle shots hitting your troops throughout the full entirety of the attack as the jump spell is used to help protect help push this king and queen in deeper into the core as the triple ice golem does come out of the clan castle Gonna get into the defensive uh, king very, very earlier with the king, with the queen following right behind him. That uh, bloom will go down to the poison from the defensive clan castle, and the ice golems are gonna stall him up a little bit there as he ends up fighting Nam off with mostly the Valkyries that are in the mix over there. But he's already got hogs released out of the siege barracks, releasing over the left side of the base there. The king did not stay in front of the queen. He went all the way to the core of the base there, which means that every, every like almost every single troop that he has in the core is getting hit by that blast and poison. That is painful right there, and that's gonna slow his progress significantly. Yeah, he's going to try to continue to this backside about, it's all about time here with that queen continuing. He does wall break his way through the backside with that queen continuing her way through. Hogs with that RSC ability, and he's got the headhunter super barbs. Fantastic job on cleanup, as it is a three star here for Simon coming in with a one minute and 15 second attack. Try hard. Wants to turn it around with a triple of his own coming in with the root batters and the Valks. And we, we're seeing that gem spell gonna be paired in with the king typically now and not taking an overgrowth. Seeing so many of these attacks here using the the healer puppet and the frozen arrow on the queen. So she pops her ability the moment she drops, spawns the healers, and then will need, immediately need to get some tanking in position to be able to get through. But she's kind of in her wall prey. Oh, where's this? Mm -hmm. This queen's going for a walk here, Carbon. Yeah. That could spell trouble right out of the gate. This is a problem. King comes back to life with the Phoenix, but unfortunately, she's not going to walk into the core of this base as the Warden of Alien does go off trying to protect these Rue Riders, making his way across. But we do Dude. have an invisibility spell next to that town hall. Watch out! Yeah, but Queen went down over the right side, so he just lost his entire right flank, and now he's going to be engaged in the defensive CC here with a triple ice cool and pop, and now going to stall him up here heavily while he's under heavy, heavy fire. Already burned his ward ability, already under the healing tome, and that's where it's thin. He's losing a lot of troops here very quickly. Visibility tower is right there. He'll get it down, but it's going to make the town hall disappear, and he's going to walk away from it. Oh, no. He has to take the town hall with the world champion, and she's oh, stuck no. at ice golems. No, no, no. We got the RC securing the town hall. No! Oh, oh rip! Oh. The dream! Try hard with the one star to open up the war here for Millis MG, and that is not how you wanted to start off a match against a team like Synchronic, who very rarely, rarely slips up. But then again, I can say the same thing about Millis MG. so if it happened once, it can happen again, and this is not the first one star that we've seen today, so you never know what's wow. going to happen from here, but not the best way to start off a war here. That is shocking, Garvin. That is unfortunate. The super bars were not placed in the beginning to help funnel that queen. She went walking. He was planning to use rages onto that queen and the healers to continue to keep that queen moving. Could have grabbed some valuable defenses of the Inferno, multi-archer tower over on the right side. But unfortunately, it is a one star for try hard. Fast is one is the fireball with the warden and two is the angry jelly pet. Still, no sure. one's used it yet because the thing with the angry jelly pet is you're going to ignore those outside buildings. You're going to go straight for defenses. So it's going to slow you down when you have to turn back around to eventually get them. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very good point there. I think uh, Warden Walks with Anger Jelly are completely insane. And uh, the Firefall also combined with that. That, that. There's some stuff that we just don't see here that is potentially could be able to be played, but we're just not going to see it because they're forced to do a faster attacks turn to stay competitive here. And so they don't have a lot of proficiency with attacks like that. But one thing they definitely absolutely do have proficiency with is the Electric Dragons. They gotta maintain this one because it is one of the fastest attacks in the game. And when we see some good chain opportunities on the base, like we saw in this one, he's able to get some pretty good damage with them across the board and just thin it out enough that the heroes can wrap around the backside. And he's got a big pack still moving up top and he's reinforcing not losing track of any part of the attack, they're reinforcing with super barbarians on the backside to support as he drags to make sure they can finish it. 
And he sends that Raw Champion in towards the end on the left side as three E-Dragons are still remaining. That Phoenix pulling the shots of the air defense as it goes down. Still has a freeze. Queen ability and RC ability. And Philip is indeed getting another three-star here for Sekronic. Just got to close out the... Uh, get past that King right there. Obviously, that's not going to be a problem, but... I'm loving the use of the healer puppet there. I I, have, I don't know about you, but I personally was so obsessed with the frozen arrow initially, and now that we realize that the uh, the comedy, and no. they are they can't move fast enough. I know a lot of people actually like the Rude Riders and Witches instead of the Valkyries, and I, I feel like that's a mistake. I think right now the Valkyries are the stronger troop in the meta if you had to choose between the two of them. But this one, not gonna have either. It's gonna have a queen charge, and when the attack is allowed to be slowed down a little bit there when they have more time to work with. A lot of these pro players like the control that is given by a queen charge, and they will opt for that whenever possible. Yeah, with that queen charging away straight into the mile of slowing it down with that frozen arrow. Pulls out the ice golem's gonna have to charge through. He does freeze it up so that the queen goes straight for the mile and does not switch off onto the ice golems, which definitely will play a big role in that queen charge as the king's ability does go off. And he grabs that section and no jump to invest on this king. He's just gonna continue to damage the multi and take it out over the wall. <laughs> oh, impressive stuff. But it's not even done there, Carpet, because he's in the core, clearing out all the traps with his Phoenix and continue to pick up a couple more defenses on top of that. Look at all the trap carry that he did over there. And that does lead me to wonder if this base is symmetrical, that if there's a bunch of traps that is in the same spot on the other side, that this queen charge could be marching right into danger right now with a whole bunch of traps right above her head, above that multi-inferno. Yeah, but the question is, does he place the traps there for queen charges? Or does the traps get placed somewhere else for a different type of attack? Because you don't see queen charges nowadays at Town Hall 16 due to the time factor that is involved with it, as the queen's going to be able to help secure the Town Hall easily, as the Root Riders can use the Warden Eternal Tome to move on past the Town Hall, not even get touched by it, and continuing in with that Eternal Tome and being protected by the Healing Tome. Yeah, got the Valkyries released out of the Siege Barracks over to the far left side, even wall breaking them in on the outside to make sure they are going to go in and help out into the Eagle Artillery area and pass that multi Inferno, although they are taking the hits there. Would be nice if all those Inferno beams are going to the Root Riders that are still under the healing tome that the Warden is providing, but that outside group is going to get smoked there by that multi before he can get it down. So that's going to slow him down a little bit there, but I think he's going to be overall fine. He's got so much value out of the Queen at the start there to set it up and just did the pathing for the Root Riders, it makes sure they can avoid the town hall a, a very very nice queen charge and that's the control that these guys like to be able to have when they are not pressured into attacking so fast because this attack is going to be much better to keep under control the entire time much more predictable on how things play out there as he is bringing indeed again the root riders and valkyries so fun fact General X last week broke the world record for the fastest attack done in Clash of Clans Esports. He set the world record at 56 seconds, breaking the previous world record at 57 seconds. But then, uh, a few days later, then we had uh, Pato from Free Agent step in and he broke it at 54 seconds. But then General X went back in like two days ago and he broke the record again in another community tournament at 53 seconds. So he's the current world record holder for the fastest attack in Clash of Clans Esports. And what seemed like it would be almost impossible just uh, just like a month ago, even when we were seeing attacks go in sub one minute to go that insanely fast. So we know that he can multitask like a madman to be able to be able to manage that and he's got an eye for it but obviously speed is not a factor for this one through riders make their way forward across the base there and quick and easy it's a clean sweep there's not much to can stop this right now carbon no not really as the root riders continuing through uh, with that grand war and the queen is falling right on behind we have the royal champion taking out the enemy queen pops at rc ability the Hogs going to continue their way on through, and General X is adding another three star. He's liking it, putting them to 12 stars so far and in a healthy lead. Oh, I just, uh, did I get it wrong there? My, the, the Twitch chat saying that it was Einstein actually who broke, broke the record, not General X. So maybe it's his teammate. Maybe it was his teammate. But either way, either way, impressive there. But Timper, Rookie of the Year 2023, will make his way forward here. He used to play for Rapata Gaming, and he used to be teammates there with Einstein, who, like I said, is currently the world record holder on attack time. 
with that queen to start and the queen's gonna charge away from the bottom side and a flame flinger is being used and the flame flinger did receive that new level level five uh, with the latest update there that can help in your deck. I would say it's more likely to be helping lower town halls when it's being donated than really the higher town halls at town hall 16 at the moment because those lower town halls, when they're getting siege machines, oh man, are those powerful. Oh yeah, but I would say that when you have time, I see more people, like whenever we have a miss in a war, I see the pro players consistently swapping out their siege barracks, which they do when they need to go fast. They do the siege barracks when they need to go fast, but whenever they have more time to set an attack up, I see them almost always opt for the flight figure. I feel like that is the number one choice from them. But we do have the invisible towers in the core of the base here, surrounded the town hall. We have the town hall that is boxed off there from the rest of the base and dead center, so not going to be an easy punch to get into it, but he's trying to create a path for the queen. He's got one more wall break, and he's already got one wall break access to be able to get in there. This needs to be careful here to make sure that the queen actually goes into the court, and I think she's going to go right where it needs her to. And I like the the heads up a uh, couple archers over the left side of the base to make sure that the... No, okay, the queen still goes over there. Okay, I think she's still on track here, Carbon. And she's going to be able to reach... Okay, oh, the wall's open barely from the flame flinger, so she can step in and grab the town hall and even the enemy royal champion while the Lalo is coming in from the top side with that Grand Warden. And this is where you can pop a Warden ability to protect the Warden and a potential Hound flying across. And it looks like he actually doesn't have any more Hounds. But the Queen's going to secure the Town Hall as he continues with a Warden ability soon. And he still has the Royal Champion to utilize. And the Flame Flinger's still moving as well. Good thing he got that Invisibility Tower dealt with right there. So we didn't have him making the Town Hall disappear. Otherwise, he would have to burn one of the spells that he <laughs> doesn't even seem to be using. He's got three he Rages still. He's got three Freezes. And was he messing around here? Is he I messing around? I feel, like he's, I feel like he's trolling a bit here. Yeah, he doesn't need that Royal Champion. He sends her in at the very end, but really he could have probably just ended up raging and freezing. But look at how many spells he has here. <laughs> well done to Temper. Great attack. The Queen did end up going down. We'll have to get through this Defensive King, but you can end up freezing him, stopping him from targeting your RC just for a second. But great job, Temper. will be delivering a three-star here for Millicene, putting them to ten stars, but they are still down by two in this match. Yeah, still going to need a monster, monster defense here. Oh, man, they're in, a, they're in such a rough spot there, but you got to hand it to him. He's going to be able to get that done, and he even just holds all those swag spells there. Indeed, that is what he's bringing here. And a lot of pros do decide to bring that healing tome, and the hog puppet is a really popular choice amongst the pros here, as the skeleton spells is used right away to help protect it and distract these defenses as the Root Riders elves go in. Got to get some troops, King and Queen, up to the top side to help push those Root Riders into the middle. I do like to put the Root Riders into, like if I see a whole bunch of heroes clumped together, I am almost always going to put my uh, Root Riders into that. And then, then I can use the Warden Eternal Tome to protect me as I push to the core of the base, but at the same time, I can protect headhunters to quickly go and get those defensive heroes out of the way. And then I can just run the heroes separate from that. The queen gets their own wall break, the king gets his own wall break, but the king has extra uh, access on top of that being grabbed by the jump. And he's also putting in skeleton spells in that area, so lots of value up at the top of the base there being had. And now the town hall is activated on percentage, the root are in position, and they will almost definitely take that down right there. They got tons of firepower, and with the town hall, dropping. Millicene MG is eliminated and Synchronic will move on to the next round in the lower bracket and I guess we'll see if they can survive through their next opponent because uh, this was uh, this one was in the in the books here from Synchronic it felt like from the start ever since that one star happened and they're just not giving up on continue to push for a perfect war here Carmen. Yeah unfortunate from Tryhard getting that one star earlier in this match as Mark is continuing to push with that Royal Champion on towards this multi-target Inferno. This Queen, unfortunately, is stuck behind this wall. She can reach everything if she walks out of that wall around as the RC barely gets the multi-target Inferno down. Bob Tower has almost no health. The Wizard can try to help a little bit with cleanup, but he's going to have plenty of time for this Queen no matter what, as it will be a three-star and a perfect War for Sakrana, keeping their hopes alive in the lower bracket where they will be taking on none other than free agents in the next round. 
of free agents being as they currently aren't signed by an org. So obviously I, I wouldn't be surprised there if uh, they get uh, picked up by an org here really, really soon. They're consistently very, very strong. They've been juggling through a couple different orgs there, but free agents is what they're running this right now. And I guess we'll see how they do. Tournaments will then be going in for the taking silver tickets and then play for the last slot of the world championship but it looks like hawk is in we're underway here the last attack of the war and the last attack for their month's run in this golden ticket competition as they are eliminated but we want to see them go out with a with a three star and we'll see if hawk can make it happen yeah with that queen charging away through the bottom side that king is going to try to beat through this wall, but he's going to come back with that Phoenix there. Got the value as the Queen is going to continue to push through this monolith as the Clan Castle is waiting just behind as he lures out the Archers and some Ice Golems as he needs to keep this Queen alive through this charge to get the value. Yeah, I got a... The King was able to get his primary targets there, though, and the Queen with the damage relieved off of her left flank there is not going to have too many problems here. And when she only has the access from the from the wall break there, then she's going to be able to get pushed directly to the town hall and she'll, she'll get to it eventually. I don't have any doubt that she'll make sure that goes down. But over the left side there, the Siege Barracks work on the outside, but all these wizards are getting sniped off by the multi-archer tower. So losing a lot of Siege Barracks value, kind of a strange approach into the base here with that Siege Barracks positioning, but at least he's taking out some of the exterior buildings there and he's gonna make sure the queen can charge into more important things up ahead. Yeah, with that queen continuing from the left side, the oh, Root Riders, Warden, everything making their way all the way up into this Eagle Artillery, helping to take that down. The queen still has ability, raw champion ability, and one freeze left. We do have a defensive rage spell now getting activated, so it's gonna be quite a bit of damage in the core, but he does end up using the freeze here to try to continue to path around as the queen can walk through the bottom side of these walls to help grab the final remaining buildings. Yeah, she's got it on lockdown, and this is always tanky right there. Roar Champion, like, you don't even really need the Queen to be able to finish it off right there. She could have already gone down, and it wouldn't be an issue because the Roar Champion seems to be walking through that area there. No issues, getting stalled by the Tornado Trap. It still has plenty of HP, and the Queen will step in and steal the glory there and take out the last... Nope, just kidding, she switched. It's fine. It's a triple. It's 13 stars.